across the spectrum, and around the globe, we bring you World Combat Sports. Ah, uh, World Combat Sports, yeah. World Combat Sports, oh, uh, yeah. World Combat Sports, oh. Uh. World Combat Sports, yeah. World Combat Sports, ah, uh, yeah. World Combat Sports, yeah. World Combat Sports, ah, uh, yeah. World Combat Sports, yeah. speaking with the one and only heavyweight contender, Moses Johnson. How you doing today, man? man? I'm good. I'm good. Just enjoying life. It's somewhat nice outside. It's not raining anymore. It's been raining for the last few days, so I'm pretty good. I can't complain. Oh, yeah, man. Um, I had the pleasure, you know, you were telling me earlier, you're basically from Long Island, but now you reside here in Rocky Hill, South Carolina. How's that transition been for you in the sport of boxing, you know, coming down here, relocating, and um, getting into training? Um, honestly, it hasn't been that bad. I mean, the training the training is a lot harder than it was in New York, so I, I can't complain. It's tough. It's, you know, it's, it's getting better. It's getting good, though. The sparring's great. I'm getting good work down here, so I can't complain. So coming from NYC, you know, talking about getting work, how was that like for you? Like, um, you know, what, what did you look for specifically as a fighter up there in NYC was known as the boxing mecca, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the comeback come to here in Rock Hill, um, South Carolina. What is the specialty? You know, what's the difference? Um, well, the difference, you know, in New York, it's like when you spar, you spar. It's not like, oh, we're going to work yeah. on this. Like when you spar, it's just like the Philly gyms. It's just like the Philly wars. You know, you go to Brooklyn and spar out there. It's like you better you better get a good night's sleep. You better eat a good breakfast. <laughs> but, but out here, it's good work. You know, I have a few guys I'm working with. They're just working on the techniques. To get to the next level, it's not killing each other. So, well, I gotta ask you though, what brought you down here, man? Oh man, I, I actually met my coach, Mike right. Engler, and uh, shout out to you, coach. Yep, yep. So, when I was in New York, things were just kind of funny as far as me training, and I was like, man, I need a new fit for what I'm trying to do. I, I want to be the best. I want to be a heavyweight champion one day, and <clears throat> so you know, I, I was like, I figured I'd come down here try it, and I just picked up and moved everything down here and now I'm here. I, I moved here last July 2019. What brought you to the sport, man? How long have you been in the game? I uh, started when I was 18. Actually, I started when I was 17. I'm 27 now. And I, I just wanted to learn. When I was younger, my dad would teach me karate and a little boxing here and there. But then I transitioned that to football and basketball and wrestling. And then one of my friends, Elvis, was like, yo, come to the gym, check it out. I was like, oh, I'm kind of, <laughs> but I went and I fell in love with it. And now here, here we are. I'm six and zero, oh, six knockouts. So everything, everything's going pretty good. Yeah, I heard that, man. You undefeated. Yeah. Unblemished. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. How's the rise been for you? What have you learned on that undefeated, rec undefeated record, man? As a fighter. Just you got to stay humble, cause you know, any anyone could lose. Anything could happen in a fight, so you just have to. Stay dedicated to your craft, no matter what level you get to, whether you're fighting in a gym, whether you're fighting in the garden or the Barclays, you just have to stay dedicated to your craft, and that'll pay the bills, and that'll, that'll make you success, successful <clears throat> down the road. What's been your best fight so far, man? Uh, man, that's a tough one. Because me, I, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I, yeah, I, yeah. Think, <laughs> I think all of them could be better. But I would have to say in my fight in October, I fought I fought actually on the UFC card mm -hmm. in Canada. In Canada, I stopped the guy. He he didn't want to get up. He didn't want to come back out after the second round. So that was a that was a pretty good one. So you're in the heavyweight division, man. Right now, the state of the heavyweight division is being shook up a little bit because you have the unified titles in the UK. You got yep. Deontay just losing the WBC. Yeah. How do you see yourself with the with the medium contenders on the rise, like the Bars, the Joyces, yeah. you know, and all those guys? Man, I'm excited because, you know, like, like you said, the heavyweight division had been at a low point. Now it's finally coming up. You got these great guys like Daniel Dubois, Joyce. So I'm excited to fight all those guys one day. I'm excited. 
So who do you want first, man? I know you mentioned some names <laughs> of some individuals that you spar with. You know what I'm saying? Who, who, who would you want first out of the names? Man. If you had the opportunity to get the call up, man, who would you like uh, to first face man. first? Like I said, I want, I want, I want the smoke with all those guys. It okay. don't matter who comes, who who's last, who's first, who's last. You know, we we train to fight everybody, so we stay in shape for everyone. And whatever they have, we're gonna we're gonna be there to meet them. So we'll definitely be ready when that time comes. What has been the most difficult part of boxing for you? You know what I'm saying? You say things was a little funny up there in NYC, and I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But for the fans who tuned in, you making that transition down here to Rock Hill, meet your coach. You know, what what is what has been the toughest part for you as a fighter? Um, you know, keeping your unblemished record, getting into training, and learning more about the sport. Yeah, honestly, I I, I would have to say the uh, not so much the dedication, but just the grind. You know, like doing it so long, it's not like, it, it's no it's no such thing as an overnight success. So, like, you could grind for eight years and nothing could happen. Mm-hmm. And in that ninth year, everything could blow up. Yeah. So, you have to just stay dedicated. And it's tough, you know, because sometimes you work so hard, it's like you're staying stagnant. And you want to get to point, point Z, but you have to go through A, B, C, D. You have to go through the certain steps that all the greats went through. Speaking of stagnant, man. You know, you got to stay motivated one way or the other. Yeah. What's some tunes you listen to to get oh, you in the man. mood, man, before you step in here and cause some pain? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got to throw Nipsey out there. All right. I like that Nip. Nipsey. I like, I like the game. I like Oh, 50. you still like the game? Yeah, okay. man. That, that new album, not that bad. Okay. Not that bad. Uh, he don't yeah. have control over his publishing rights, though. Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah man. You got to, yeah, you got to, you know, you got to get that. But yeah. I, I basically listen to everything. It kind of depends on what mood I'm in, you know? I listen to Lenny. Okay. Somebody, somebody got me stuck on Lenny. <laughs> Who got you stuck on Lenny? My coach, man? my coach. Okay. So it, it basically depends what mood, what mood I'm in. So Lenny might be the preparation music. Yeah, yeah. Get a little yeah. stretch in, yeah. you know. Yeah, I feel <laughs> a little cool down music. What about when you out on the road doing road work, man? You know. Ah. Uh, let's see. I like that little baby, that new album, okay. that Gunna. Just yeah. gotta get after it. No matter how tired you are, just keep pushing, keep going, keep going. So, when should we see you back in the square, man? You know, being with the pandemic and everything, yeah. the boxing gyms were shut down. It totally changed the scope of boxing all the way around, man. Definitely. And um, as media, I was like thinking about the fighters. Y'all really don't get a stipend. Y'all really have to find an alternative yeah. place to work yeah. if you don't have that stipend coming in. So how you been able to survive out here, man, during the COVID-19? Shut man, up. just, you know, just time management, money management. You know, you have to be smart. You know, you got a lot of dudes who are still out here going to the club, yeah, going, spending money that they don't have, and then they get in the tight bond. But, you know, just, that's it. You know, I've seen a lot of fighters, smart. man. I know you had the, in, in, in the heaviest division, but I've seen yeah. a lot of fighters pick up some weight. We yeah. talking 135, 140. <laughs> they say they're 170, 175 right now, man. Yeah. So what have you been able to do to maintain that diet, you just, know, and your discipline? Just, you know, that road work. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, the gyms are closed. I can't work out, but the roads are never closed. You could go do some sprints. You could get your hill sprints in. You could jump rope. You know, that's just another excuse that people just want to throw out. Oh, I can't work out. But you can work out. You can shout a box. You can find other ways to get a good workout in. Absolutely, man. Yeah. You know, in your division, who do you see right now as far as being one of the best, the first, um, the the um, the top one and two fighters in your division right now? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I, I would have to say Tyson Fury, you know, he's up there. That, that awkwardness. Yeah. And he's such a big guy. You know, when you fight someone that big, it's like, man, what do I do, you know? Speaking uh, of Tyson Fury, that Moses... If you was in the ring with Tyson Fury, just say, for instance, you had to fight him, what is the game plan you would have to negate what he was able to have success with with Deontay Wilder? Go to the body. Okay. None of these, none of these heavyweights go to the body. You know, that body, those body punches are, are a good investment. You know, the, it happens over time. So, you know, a lot of people just want to hit the guy and have yeah. them feel it, but you hit him a few times, angles, movement, and, and I think that, that, could, that could do it. So, Deontay facing the adversity that he faced, what do you think he did wrong as a fighter 
and allowing Tyson Fury one who came in 273 pounds yeah. leaning on him yeah. and then but yet he was still landing some good combinations yeah. I, what what could have Deontay Wilder done better I think as far as like when you got a big guy who leans on you yeah. don't fight it like okay. if he's leaning on you just you know go with it you know because you waste a lot of energy trying to push back into it and try to you know and and he should have moved more I think he should have moved more and just went to the body because you waste so much energy trying to muscle and move that guy. Yeah. And then he's a big dude. He's not, yeah. you know. If if they were the same weight, then it would have been easier. But, you know, you got, he had, what, like 50 pounds on Wilder. Mm -hmm. So moving that extra weight's a lot. You know, it takes a lot out of your legs. I'm pretty sure you learned a lot in your, in your process of growing as a fighter, still undefeated. What's some of the names you have sparred with in the gym, man? Uh, Daniel Dubois, Adam Kanowski, Jarrell Miller, Derek Rossi, yep. Speaking of Alan, um, Alan Kanowski, you know, he lost to Robert Helena. So I, yeah, I was like man. shocked, you know. I, yeah, that, I that's, talked to him at the, that's at, my at guy, the grand, yeah. and I'm like, I could have sworn, you know, his boxing skills are going to play a role, but yeah. um, do you think he just had the wrong game plan for the taller fighter or what? I don't know. I think I think he should have he should have regrouped himself and not okay. got up so fast. Okay. But as soon as he was down, he got back up. Gotcha. But a lot of fighters, you know, you're like, all right, you gotta take a breath. All right, I'm down. I gotta get back up. And just take your time. You know, even if you're still shaking up when you get knocked down, you know, dance around, move around a little bit. Don't just get back up and go go at it. You know. Absolutely. And Danny Dubois, he's he's due to face. Um, George. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm excited so who, about who that. Who got that? I know without showing favoritism. I'm, yeah, I'm biased. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? You've been in there with the Dubois. Yeah. So you're going for the Dubois. Yeah, course. definitely. Okay. Because sure. I, I watch Joyce and Daniel has a strong jab. Okay. He has a strong jab and he's just fast. And you feel his presence when you're <clears throat> when you're moving with him. You feel his presence. So he's a big dude. He's a strong dude. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Speaking of the transition between, you know, meet your coach, you know, kind of give me a backstory on how that played out, man. Um, I know you kind of fast forward through it, but how much of an intricate role have your coach played, you know, you transferring over here from NYC to his gym, you and him working as a team? How's yeah. that been? Oh, man, it's been perfect. He, he makes me feel like, like I'm at home here. You know, I don't know anyone here. I just up and left and... He, he, he honestly made me feel comfortable. I love it down here. I probably won't go back to New York. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it, it's a good fit. The training is everything I ask for. Because the hardest thing in boxing is finding the right coach and finding the right team. You, know, you have a lot of people who I think just because, oh, I'll go to Mayweather Gym. Just because that gym, that gym won't bring you success. You have to find the right coach. And you yourself, you have to bring yourself success. If that makes sense. That sounds worse, man, because um, a lot of people never hear the story on how a boxer actually linked up with their coach, man. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They just know <laughs> who's in their corner yeah. and where you at right now. Yeah. So you sit at 15 and 0. Don't nobody know the road travel. How long exactly, your coach with you? exactly. Because a lot of cats, but oh, like a Canelo's camp would be a good fit because Canelo, but it might you might get there. The work might be good, but the bond might not be there. The bond is more important than the work because that good bond makes you want to work. If you don't have a good bond with your team, you can't trust them, and it's like you're working for nothing, you know? As a fighter, man, what's the most humbling experience you've had so far? Being in the hurt biz is one of the toughest combat sports. What's been your most humbling experience just far? Oh, man. Uh, that's a tough one. Probably just, you know, I feel like everyone's had that sparring session where They've gotten hurt or mm -hmm. gotten, you know, clipped. Yeah. And, you know, it just keeps you humble. It's like, you know, no matter who you are, you just have to keep working. You know, you could get hurt no matter who you go up against. You know, even if the odds are, if you're 100% supposed to beat this person, anything could happen. You know, you could have a bad day in the office. You could get clipped with a yeah. punch you don't see coming. So that, that definitely humbles you. That's good stuff, man. What's your walk around weight, man? I'm 245. Okay, so... Yeah. When you basically step in, you be. You know, I'll fight on. about 230, 235. Okay, all yeah. right, sure. Yeah, so. That's what's up. Yeah, man. I'm excited to get that work. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, um, around here, man, I've heard good things about you. Thank you know, you. up and coming. A lot of people got good things to say about you, man. Thank so, you. I appreciate that. Um, 
you know, as World Combat Sports, I look forward to seeing you grow in the sport. Definitely. You know, definitely. you're still undefeated. So you've been in there with some good names already oh, as yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. So it's only going to get better for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So what you got to say to your fight fans, man? What can they follow you on man, social media? Uh, my Instagram is Mo Johnson, two underscores. Mo Johnson, two underscores. And I'm just ready, man. You can see all my workouts. You can see I'm in the gym every day. I live in the gym, so... You know, Do you have any video on YouTube, you know, shout about anything? No, like that? no. Okay. No. No, we, we keep that on low. We okay. keep that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Moses, thank you very much. Thank well, you. Grant me the interview, man. Thank Rocky you. of South Carolina, undefeated heavyweight, six and no undefeated man. <laughs> Be on the lookout for him. Mo Jason. I appreciate Salute, it. Salute, man. Thank you.